Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. Welcome to the way too early 2022 top 10 uh, in ADP. I'm going to take a look at drafts that have already been done. There are real money drafts that are going on right now at underdog fantasy best ball drafts, albeit what they are. Uh, but we have some AD ADP uh, data that we can look at through drafts that have been completed. And we're going to go over where the top 10 sits right now for 2022 fantasy football drafts. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. It's one of the brand new videos that I've got here on our brand new fantasy football channel. So if you're used to watching my daily fantasy videos over on the main channel, this is this channel is going to be guided more towards your season long videos. We're going to take you and get you prepared all the way up to draft month throughout 2022. So thank you all for being here. Drop a subscribe on the brand new channel. Drop a like on this video. Leave me a comment down below with players that you think are going to jump into the top 10 by the time we get to August or players that you think are going to fall out. And let's go. He's a legend. <laughs> We're going to jump absolutely right into this. Thank you guys for being here. I do appreciate you all. Uh, go to smizzle.tv slash links if you wanted links to all of the things that I'm at, all my socials, our Discord, everything else, smizzle.tv slash links. It's down below in the description if you just click show more. The number one pick right now in terms of ADP on Underdog Fantasy is Jonathan Taylor. Volume monster, absolute beast, big splash player, uh super fast running back, like top 98th percentile, right? Top 2% in terms of his breakaway speed. And we saw that massive size as well at 225. Leads the league in terms of, uh, in 2021, in terms of inside the five carries, ran for 1,800 yards, was also a little bit more involved in the passing game. We want to see that grow. If he can get to like 55 to 60 receptions next year, that brings his floor up, as well as being able to have access to a 100-yard game uh, and, and touchdowns every single week with as much as they go to him once they get inside the five what we need is better quarterback play uh whether they stick with Wentz whether they go somewhere else who knows uh, what's going to happen because it's going to be a crazy offseason uh and the the carousel is going to be moving constantly on quarterbacks it's already started with coaches uh, and hopefully this Colts offensive line which is top notch uh, can stay that way, and maybe they get a little bit better play on the outside, which would open things up, and Jonathan Taylor can run against some lighter boxes. But he is your 1.01 right now. Coming in at the two-pick, Derrick Henry, the big dog. Uh, best comparable here on Player Profiler is uh, Zangief, is his comp. He's a big, fast, strong man who is otherworldly and was well on his way to being the fantasy MVP based on his volume, production, touchdowns, and everything else before he suffered that injury uh, halfway through the fantasy season. He was carrying one of my teams uh, in that ESPN 06010 guillotine league and losing him was impossible to replace. So he is back in the top three again this year. I think he was, uh, his ADP last year was 4.7. He was gone around the three pick often. If he wasn't, he was gone around the four pick often, especially uh, earlier drafts if you were drafting early like I do in May, June, and July. Uh, so you know what you're getting when you're getting Derrick Henry. Perfect for best ball because he does not have a really high or doesn't have as high A floor as other players because if he has like an 80-yard game on 25 carries with no touchdowns, you know he's not going to be involved in the passing game. Uh, although last season in 2021, he did get way more usage. 19 catches in 2020, 18 catches in 2019, and he basically had matched that mark halfway through the season. So at least with the new coaching staff, they were our offensive coaching staff, offensive coordinator and such. They were getting him more involved in the passing game. That's all we want, right? Just four targets a game for Derrick Henry, and he's a world beater. and should continue to be next season. Christian McCaffrey right now has an ADP of three. So, like, here's the question as we go down the top ten. I think that there are seven running backs currently in the top ten on underdog fantasy in terms of ADP through real money drafts at this point so far. Uh... I know that I'm going to get a lot of replies down below in, uh, that are going to say, I would never draft Christian McCaffrey. He's burned me the last two years. He's injury prone now. I'm never taking him again. Dude's like 25 years old. Running backs do tend to burn out quickly. We know that. But whether you're playing half PPR on underdog or whether you're playing full PPR in your home league or somewhere else for best ball and DraftKings or wherever, uh, if Christian McCaffrey plays 14 plus games, like he did basically every other year of his career, except for 2020 and 2021, the amount of usage he gets in the passing game and on the ground and inside the five 
is unrivaled. Just nobody has the floor that he has. He has a path if he has a full complement of snaps over the course of a season to be the number one player in fantasy and to basically break all fantasy records. We know that. And yes, he has been out for spells the last two years, but he is not a broken down player and he plays a position at running back where every single player is one play away from that happening. Somebody who had happened to two years ago right now is the number four play, uh, player off the board, and that's Austin Eckler. Played 10 games in 2020, missed half the season uh, with an ankle injury, played 16 last year, and it performed exceptionally well. Got more inside the five carries than he had gotten at any point during the rest of his career. 70 receptions right in his wheelhouse, did not break 1,000 yards rushing, but in terms of total yards, over 1,500 for Austin Eckler last year. And I posed the same question to you. What if Austin Eckler is just uh, a low volume Christian McCaffrey and Christian McCaffrey plays 16 games next year? It comes down to with every one of these picks. Well, I would take Austin. If you were, if you had the four pick and Christian McCaffrey and Austin Eckler are available, which one are you taking? Same thing goes at the next pick. Cooper Cup, fantastic picture. Uh, is seemingly indefensible throughout the NFL playoffs, throughout the entire season. We know that this offense has been fantastic since McVay took it over, but the jump in targets to 191 in 2021 from 124 in 2020 uh, and 134 in 2019, that's going to be the question. Will that number of targets, will he still get the same amount of volume that he got this year? Now, if he comes back, it's not regression, right? But like if his role in the offense, if they keep Odell Beckham Jr., uh, if Van Jefferson progresses as a player, uh, or if they sign some other, you know, great veteran player to play on the other side and they get Robert Woods back as well. If Cooper Cup's targets sink to like 160, He's still in play at this point of the of the first round. The problem is you're paying for him at 180 plus targets. Now there is definitely a chance that he replicates that. It's not a regression stat, right? Volume is volume, uh, and he can certainly handle it. And based on the way that they scheme things, he's always open. So like, as long as this offense stays solid, as long as Matthew Stafford is still the quarterback next year. Uh, it, barring some sort of crazy injury or anything else where they get a downgrade at quarterback, Cooper Cup is going to be extremely solid and bankable in 0.5 and full PPR leagues. Next pick, Najee Harris. I'm always going to pronounce his name wrong because there's everybody thinks that it's wrong. Whether you say Najee Harris or Najee Harris, it does not matter. Somebody's going to tell you to pronounce it wrong. Volume is everything when it comes to running backs. And we know that Harris got that with over 300 receptions and or sorry, 300 receptions would be some kind of record, 300 rush attempts and 74 receptions last year. Now they're going to transition from a noodle armed, aged Ben Roethlisberger to somebody else. And we don't know who in 2022, whether that's going to be Aaron Rodgers uh, or whether that's going to be like a Mason Rudolph caliber player, a running back, Volume is is king, right? So like we saw, they had a bad offensive line. Nobody wanted to draft Harris last year. Uh, he was at the back half of the second round. Uh, and he still performed and right now is uh, projecting as a top half of the first round pick for 2022. If he gets improved quarterback play, if it's Aaron Rodgers, if it's Russ Wilson, you know, uh, and, and they spend a little bit in the offseason to improve that offensive line, which was horrible last year. Better offensive play, all around benefits the running back, assuming that the volume will stay consistent, which it should for Pittsburgh, regardless of who the quarterback is. But more touchdown opportunities, more red zone opportunities, more inside the five opportunities uh, makes Harris a fantastic play here in the middle of the round. Into the first round, into the Super Bowl and into the first round, Jamar Chase. Now, this is going to be the interesting one. Only 128 targets as a rookie. Typically, wide receivers do get a bounce that second year in terms of their market share of targets, uh, in terms of their volume that they can take on. He did score a lot of touchdowns, 13 of them exactly, in his rookie season. One of the best wide receiver prospects ever in the history of the game, and especially in the last 10 years or so, uh, was Jamar Chase. So, like, he is in rarefied air when it comes to the level of prospect that he is, as you can see by his ridiculous scores that he had at the workouts and the combines, the pro days, and everything else. My issue is that we're paying for hype in this spot. 
We're paying a little bit for performance, but we're paying a lot for hype. Considering that 128 targets is nowhere near enough uh, to pay for a first round pick. So like, this is going to be a very weird back half of the first round, especially when you see a few of the players. I've got a few players that are outside of the top 10 that were snubbed uh, that I think we might have to consider at least the back half of the first round or might slide into the top 10. So like Jamar Chase, if he gets 160, 170 targets next year, amazing. If he doubles up again at 120 to 130 targets, he is amazing. Absolutely love the skill set and the talent, but like, man, there is a massive difference between him at 128 targets and then Cooper Cup. If he's a wide receiver two at 70 less targets, that's, that's a big drop off. Uh, in terms of volume from one to the next. Our next player in the top 10 is Alvin Kamara. Uh, last year, the third pick off the board. This year, he is what? I don't even know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's eighth right now in terms of ADP through early drafts. Don't know who his quarterback's going to be. Would love it if it was Russ Wilson. Probably wouldn't love it if it was uh, anybody else that is currently on this Saints roster. We're going to have to wait and see what the Saints do before we decide whether Alvin Kamara moves up or moves down. Uh, but there is definitely a path to paying for somebody else uh, who's behind him, kind of like Dalvin Cook, who was a monster when healthy this year. We know exactly what he can do. His touchdowns were down. So those should bounce one based on increased health in or assuming increased health in 2022 and assuming the same level of workload when they get inside the red zone and inside the five yard line. He has been just super efficient on inside the five carries. But those, that number of touchdowns dropping from 17 and 13 the previous two years, touchdowns can be fickle. The one thing that's not fickle is usage. So if he's going to get the same percentage of this team's uh, inside the five carries, that number should bounce in 2022. Our last player is another member of the Minnesota Vikings with 167 targets. Now do you kind of see what I was saying about Jamar Chase, if he only gets 125 to 130 targets or 135 targets in 2022, it's tough to warrant paying up for him over somebody like Justin Jefferson or a couple of wide receivers that are going even behind them who are getting 160 plus targets a year. The volume is just so massive uh, at these uh, first round picks when you're picking zero running back. You have to get the high volume targets and Justin Jefferson coming off the board at 10. Uh, you know that he's going to get the ball. He's always open. Massive downfield threat, as well as uh, tagging on a ton of end zone targets, which are the highest leverage targets for wide receivers like him at the 10 spot. Now, I got four players for you who are going outside of the top 10 who either fell from last year, provide you value at the, the sandwich picks at 12 and 13, and one more player who I think might sneak into the top 10 as the summer goes along. As the offseason, the draft happens, and the summer moves along, especially uh, if his team gets a quarterback. At the 11 spot right now is Devontae Adams. We don't know where he's going to end up. If he stays in Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers leaves, uh, it's definitely a downgrade. If he goes with Aaron Rodgers somewhere, uh, he's, his value stays the same. This is kind of where he's been, right? Somewhere between 6 and 12 every single season is where he falls uh, massive touchdown upside. If he goes to the Chargers, it's great. If he goes to the Rams, whatever. Uh, if Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay and he stays in Green Bay, like Devontae Adams is one of the best wide receivers in the league. Monster target getter. Great end zone uh, target getter. All of the things that you want from a first round wide receiver. Falling out of the first round in early drafts so far has been Tyreek Hill. Last year, then 8.3 in terms of his ADP. Right now, his ADP is 13. He is the 2.01 is Tyreek Hill playing in that Chiefs offense. And you could easily, if you get the 12 pick, Travis Kelsey was the 6.6 .6 last year. He's fallen to 17 overall. Are you telling me that if you get the 12 and 13 pick in a best ball draft, that you are not taking Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey if you're going to go with a zero RB build. There's plenty of running backs that are going to be available to you in the third and fourth round when your picks come back around, as well as a bunch of running backs later, which we'll highlight in other videos as the offseason rolls along. That Going with that chief stack and then hoping to get maybe Mahomes later if you wanted to pick a quarterback early. Uh, having Kelsey and Hill gives you a solid floor with massive ceiling upside. Uh, as long as both of them are healthy throughout 
the entire 17 week regular season for best ball. And last but not least, Javante Williams, current ADP of 14 on underdog fantasy. Imagine if Denver gets, I don't know, they signed the offensive coordinator and they signed another player, or sorry, another coach from Green Bay to run the offense. They've got offensive coordinator going to head coach and a, uh, like a, the quarterback's coach going to offensive coordinator. And what if Aaron Rodgers goes to Denver? And what if Melvin Gordon goes somewhere else and Javante Williams suddenly is on pace to get Harris type workload with 300 uh, rush attempts, including all of the inside the five usage and maybe, I don't know, 70 to 75 receptions. He's the guy that I think right now as an early second round pick, if you're doing super way too early drafts, could fly into a top seven or eight pick depending on who the quarterback is in 2022 for the Denver Broncos. An offense that is certainly on the rise if they get the right quarterback. So thank you guys for watching. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the brand new Fantasy Football channel. I appreciate you being here. Leave me a reply down below with somebody that you like at ADP. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.